Okay, so why am I addressing President Trump through YouTube on my video? I'm going to tell you this. The President of the United States can void my guilty verdict like that. It's going to take, it would take his team um, half a day just to verify the facts that I'm going to give. I have a ton of proof. I have a ton of proof that uh, we're talking about perjury in my trial, that we're talking about abuse of law. I have a ton of proof. But those proofs bring a context that it would take another, like it would take too much work uh, to, to, to void my, my guilty verdict. So what I'm going to suggest is to go to cut it short and go straight to the point. How can President Trump and his team cut my guilty verdict like that? It's simple. You just have to look. Everything is on the internet. Alec Baldwin himself is saying that his best, best friends from ever is uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, and Eric Schneiderman, who became general attorney of New York. And you know what? If you look on, on, on YouTube, where you find beautiful things, <laughs> you could see that it's Alec Baldwin himself doing the inauguration speech of when Andrew Cuomo became governor of New York and let the, the, the vacancy, the attorney general of New York, to another great friend of Alec Baldwin, Eric Schneiderman. So it's, it's, from his, it's from Alec Baldwin words that you will know the truth. Don't trust me. Just go say Alec Baldwin, inauguration speech, Eric Schneiderman, and it's all in there. So what does it say? It say that it was I was trial in a conflict of interest. I asked for a change of venue. It was de it was denied. Uh, in order just to get like a fair chance for justice, I said, "Oh my God, these guys are great friends. Of course, I'm gonna be demolished, and I have no chance for justice. Can I be trial in I don't know a state that Alec Baldwin does not know." every politician in place and does not know the attorney general or does not know the governor of the state. I mean, that's the, the, it's decent to ask for something, to ask for a chance for justice when you're attacked uh, at court and criminal court, as I've never had any criminal or any encounter with justice in my entire life or a police officer with my entire life. I had a virgin slate <laughs> and, and I am already like all around the world in the news, a uh, trial for criminal case and sent in jail as after a wrongfully conviction that we all know since day one, I had no chance to um, access justice or just a fair trial. And so everything went wrong from day one, just because Eric Schneiderman and Andrew Cuomo are the good, good friends of my accuser. So I had no chance. I asked for change of venue, like I said. I asked for a, 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 a court case sealed. And what would have given me, would have given me exactly what Harvey Weinstein got this week, which is press don't go to court if they can't enter the room. If they don't have anything to say about, if they cannot uh, talk about the case in the press or any specific specification that is said in the courtroom, then journalists won't go. And me, I asked for a court, uh, my court case uh, sealed from day one. I said, I want this to remain private, uh, just as I knew it was going to leave the door open for mediation. It was going to leave the door open for um, a, a understanding a context. But no, that circus become a, a worldwide, um, extremely lucrative circus for all the media, the internet sites, the newspapers, the, the news anchor on TV. Everybody was talking about it, and I was the clown of the story. Like everybody made a fortune out of it. Like I'm talking about the New York Post, the Huffington Post, uh, the news, CNN, NBC, ABC News. Everybody was talking about it and putting me on headlines like I was a stalker and and that title was imposed by NBC even prior that my accusation was formed 
And I was all over the news, all over internet, based on that fake news <laughs> created by NBC. And then when everybody, you know, every other newspaper, every news site on internet, on Twitter, uh, started to cut and paste, cut and paste, and retweet, retweet uh, the information that was initially launched by the, 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 the network that made millions with Baldwin on 30 Rocks and SNL, they retracted the, info the initial information from their own page and I couldn't access the source. So what was on internet at that time as a, you know, on a viral pace was Geneviève Sabourin is Alec Baldwin stalker, says NBC. But then the initial message was delete. It, it was just sent to ignite the fire and then the fire become huge all over the world and to nobody could stop something like that. And my charge was not even uh, written down, was not even uh, created by law that all around the planet I was labeled for life as Alec Baldwin's stalker. And when that happened, when you're vilified prior trial, well, you'll never get fair chance for trial. So I am a publicist. That's what I do for a living, and that's what I that's how I met Alec Baldwin 20 years ago. So it's not like I'm against the, the, the free speech for for the free access for press. I I think it's essential for everybody to get information through press. But is it good job good journalists? Are they gonna research the truth? Are they gonna verify the fact before printing? The answer is no. They just want to print the fast as they can because this is what happened since internet arrived. It's not about who's doing the best job, the more thorough job, something like the the interview that based on good research with real witness. No, it's not about this. It's about who can print the fastest. It's a, it's a race again time and they want to do it before everybody else talk about it because they want to make money and it's not about the truth and it's not about servicing people and community. It's about financial aspect and a businessman like Donald Trump would understand that. Um, but the thing is when you really want to be good in finance, you have to not just think of money. Seriously, you have to think of the consequences on society and you have to make the society better. And so we cannot live uh, with vilification and, and press giving names and giving addresses and giving <laughs> my phone number was given to, I mean, my address, my, my mother's address, my mother's phone number were giving to uh, media all around the world and she got so harassed and annoyed and bothered and frightened by that and terrified and disturbed in the middle of the night by the New York Post by all the journalists in front of her house that she got a very big shock out of this and now actually is she is dying from Alzheimer's and I know you know that very well because I know your father I read somewhere that your father had Alzheimer's so if that is not a fake news and if that information is true and reliable then you truly understand as a natural helper how difficult it is uh, for me to know that my mother uh, who probably would have uh, developed Alzheimer's as she had it um, in her gene, but an emotional shock, a big trauma like like we went through, started sooner. And so it's it's something I carry with me, some kind of guilt or responsibility that I carry with me, not because I did anything wrong or anything illegal, but it's just because um, if she had another daughter, it would have never happened. So it's it's very, very painful. So back to our business, uh, Donald Trump, President Trump, you can free me. Uh, and I don't want to pardon because I did nothing wrong <laughs> and nothing illegal. I want to void my guilty verdict based on the fact that my entire trial was not receivable. It was done under a conflict of interest. It was done under Andrew Cuomo and Eric Schneiderman great friends of Alec Baldwin. So, you know what? It's something that could 
that is enough to void the entire proceeding. So do I deserve it? Yes. Why? Because I'm an absolute innocent and I was victim of a system that just wanted to make a ton of profit off a drama, a scandal, because they didn't care about the truth and they certainly didn't care about the consequences on myself and my family. They just saw us as, oh my God, we're going to make a ton of money off this and we're going to, like I never gave interview. This is the first time since 2012 ever that I speak to, uh, to the public about what happened to me. And so I never gave interview and nobody ever had my side of the story. But during two years prior to trial, even if I asked for a speedy trial, which, have, which would have never taken this process for two years, uh, that is also a reason to void my guilty verdict. So there's a lot of technical, legal ways to um, free me and make me innocent and get, provide me an exoneration, which is what I want and deserve, a full exoneration. And that could happen today. It takes, for a team that is, is working half of my speed would take two hours to do. And that's it. And then what is it going to open the door to? Well, that's the most interesting part for President Trump. This could open the door to me uh, meeting the people and providing all the, my proof uh, to prove that Ilaria Baldwin perjury herself from left to right, from every angle possible during my trial. And what is it going to give? It's going to give that um, a real abuser like her will never be able to impose uh, the same way of doing things to others. Um, the same thing with Alec Baldwin, like he's, he's making fun of President Trump on SNL. Uh, he just signed, like it's all over Twitter, he's just signed another contract to do it SNL this, this winter. So it's going to lead us to uh, 2019 prior to election 2020. So I do not believe that it's going to be good to have somebody making fun of president, the President of the United States while he's going in campaign. Uh, to be re-elected, and I'm not saying what is my political position. Um, I'm just saying, by freeing me, you're not going to have that smart, talented, uh, Emmy winner uh, actor doing his kid on SNL if he's, if he's under investigation for perjury, right? Right. So that's the deal. You know, I, I believe that businessmen like to, they understand and comprehend the message of deal, the art of deal. So can, can I reach President uh, Trump uh, by a phone call, by an email? No, I can't. And even if I met his son, Eric Trump, in New York in 2000, uh, in, uh, 2011 or 2012, like at the end of 2011 or beginning of 2012, right before my arrest, I mean, I met Eric Trump in a uh, the, the the bar of the W Hotel in New York. He was with a friend of mine, his uh, partner from uh, California, and we all went for dinner the entire evening. And what a lovely young gentleman he was, Eric. And we spend the evening talking, talking about the wine, the wine, the wine, uh, the vignoble, and talking about his dream and his company, and mostly about his foundation for children, uh, which that is something that up to now gets my attention and you know my heart, and so that's 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 what it is. And and if you want to know who I am and what is my spirit and how truthful I am and genuine I am, then just ask Eric Trump, Mr. Trump, Mr. President, uh, you will know that your son uh, will recall meeting with me, will recall knowing me, and uh, he's got my phone number and I didn't change my phone number. And his friend in California has my phone number and I never changed my phone number. So they can reach me by cell phone. You're the member of your team and they have all my coordinates and that's it. And, and we could fix that injustice. Why? Because if you're the leader of freedom uh, country and the freedom world and you let one injustice happen uh, in those conditions, in conflict of interest with a foreigner, 
one injustice is one injustice too much. And it shows the world that, yes, Amer you say America first. But we can never live without collaboration and, and team spirit and participation of other country, especially the closest one, the friends country. I mean, you cannot, America cannot be isolated in, in like an island and live in autarcy. So it, that is impossible. And that would be a political suicide to think like that. So I am a good example of how the law that were established in the past decade was very damaging uh, for foreigner. And maybe I could be a good example to use not only to free myself and restore justice and provide me an exoneration, which I do not want to pardon. Because a pardon means you're pardoned by, for something you've done. And I've done nothing wrong and nothing illegal. I deserve an exoneration and I deserve it without any delay. And I demand it. And, and that's why I'm doing this. But my case will be, is, is so known around the world and I've been vilified around the world. So I would be a good uh, speaker on the behalf of American Justice Department or Washington and the White House to say, look, Something wrong can happen for a foreigner in the United States, but President Trump will fix it. So I hope my message get to you. Uh, I'm not sure. And I will be criticized and I will hear people say, well, now she addressing President Trump. Is she going to let go one day that she wants so much attention and fame? No, I don't. I really don't. I hate this. I hate doing this. I wish I would not have to do any video like this. And I have no choice. I cannot live with a crime I did not commit. I, I cannot live uh, under a wrongfully conviction. I, I tried for uh, since 2014 after my release from Rikers Island and I will not survive. My mother won't survive neither. We're stigmatized, we're labeled, we're, 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 we're put down by, by everybody we, we met. And everybody have a, a preconcept ideas and, and prejudgment that is fatal. And impossible to rent an apartment, impossible to work, impossible to... Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't have insurance for my house in the beginning. Can you believe that? And if I... I do know, but I paid three times the, the price of what I paid priors. And I have five times less objects and furniture, so it's all due to criminal record, but especially to a vilification around the world. So let's take the fact that I'm known and I've been vilified around the world, and maybe perhaps showing a better context that President Trump have at heart the desire to restore justice in my case, then everybody will believe Every foreigner will believe that they do have a true chance for justice in America, regardless of where they come from. When justice is the only thing that matters, if that's the case, President Trump, then take a look on the fact that Eric Schneiderman, Andrew Cuomo are close, close, close friends with Alec Baldwin, and I should have never been trial in New York. So that is enough to avoid my guilty verdict. I need an exoneration and I need it now. My mother is under a lot of stress and trouble. Myself, I can't find work and I have no buffer, no, no, no options. So it's a do or die and I'm doing it. I'm speaking to you directly and hopefully uh, you're going to ask your son, Eric Trump, what type of woman I am. He's going to tell you. And then based on that, you're going to have your people perhaps bring a new look to my, my guilty verdict and just set aside this guilty ver verdict and provide me a full, complete exoneration. Thank you so much. I hope in Washington that you'll see my message. Uh, I have no other options. It's a message in a bottle, but it's worth uh, sending it. 
Okay, thank you very much. And for everybody, please subscribe to my YouTube uh, channel, Geneviève Savourin. And um, please leave comments. Of course, they're going to be bad comments. I'm used to it. They're going to be good comments as well. So please do it. Thank you.